Welcome to our webinar today on Southwest Minnesota Arts Council's Grants for Artists for fiscal year 2024, which for us has just started July 1st um, and runs through June 30th of 2024. I am Carolyn Koska. I am the Grants Administrator here at Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, and I'll just run down a little bit first what we're going to talk about today. We'll just start out talking just briefly about Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. We'll look at the guidelines for these different grant programs we have for artists. Then we'll go over to our website and take a look what resources are available for you there. Then we'll head into our grant system and walk through one of the applications. And we'll finish up talking about our grant process or what happens after you submit an application. Um, looks like all of you are muted for the moment, which is great. We'll stop a couple of times uh, for questions. And if you think of something uh, as we're going along, feel free to type that in the chat. Um, and then at the end, uh, if we have some time, we can talk more about some specific projects you might have in mind. So Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC, is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting and encouraging the development of the arts in the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota by serving as a source of funds and technical services which enable local organizations, educational institutions, and individuals to sponsor, create, and promote the arts in their communities. Here is our region down in the southwest corner of the state. We are one of 11 regional arts councils that cover the whole state of Minnesota and work to get uh, state arts dollars out there. So our funding does come mostly from the state of Minnesota. We have an allocation from their general fund. Uh, and then the bulk of the funds come from the Arts and Cultural Heritage or Legacy Fund, thanks to the voters of Minnesota. Uh, we also get some funding from the McKnight Foundation, which we uh, use for our artist grants, and also from some memberships and donations from around our region. And just to be a little more specific about what that region is, uh, it includes 18 counties, which are Big Stone, Chippewa, Cottonwood, Jackson, Candy, Ohio, Lacroix, Lincoln, Lyon, McLeod, Meeker, Murray, Nobles, Pipestone, Redwood, Renville, Rock, Swift, and Yellow Medicine, and also two tribal nations, Pejutazizi, Upper Sioux Community, and Chanchayabi, Lower Sioux Community. And we acknowledge that this region does occupy the traditional ancestral and contemporary lands of the Dakota people. So we're gonna talk about, we have four programs for artists. Um, and first here we have the programs that are open to artists who are at any career stage. That is our quick support for artists which as it sounds is a quicker grant for uh, a smaller amount of money. Then we have our artist growth, which is kind of for medium sized projects. Um, and then artist equity is similar, but is specifically for BIPOC, black, indigenous or people of color only. So those are all open to artists that are at any stage in their artistic career. Um, and then we have our Advanced Artist Fellowship, which is open to established advanced artists. Um, and for that, we look at their creative excellence, uh, looking for a substantial body of work and significant recognition for that body of work. And there are just two of those awarded per year. So that one is the one that is just for those artists who are a bit further along in their career. Uh, and we'll mostly be talking about all of these together because uh, we can do the same kinds of activities under any of these grants. Um, a little bit more about applicant eligibility. You need to be living in our region for at least six months before you apply and then stay in the, living in the region throughout your whole grant project. You do need to be at least 18 years old by the time you'd be signing a grant contract with us. And uh, you can be working in any arts discipline. 
So for all of these programs, like I said, you can do the same kinds of activities, and this might be related to creating new work, which could be things uh, like purchasing some supplies or equipment that you need to do your work, um, renting some space that you need, doing research. You can pay yourself for your time to work on this. Um, or if daycare is necessary, it can cover some of those costs. Um, it also includes things related to sharing your work. So this could be things like uh, framing your work, recording things, uh, getting some editing done, putting together a portfolio, um, getting a new website, things like that. Or you may be looking more at some artistic or professional development activities, like taking a class or a workshop, working one-on-one -on -one with a mentor artist, um, attending professional conferences. And then just for our quick support grant, you also have the option to do a small artist-led community project. So um, those are kind of all the areas you could be um, pulling different activities from for the, any of these grants. Um, and you can certainly have a combination of things from, from different areas that we talked about. Uh, as far as grant amounts, quick support for artists is available for up to $1,000. Artist growth and artist equity are available for up to $4,000, and then the Advanced Artist Fellowship, $7,000. Then just looking a little bit at some eligibility as far as activities, um, the things we're gonna talk about here are all not eligible, projects that don't have an art focus, activities of a for-profit business, uh, equipment that is not really necessary for the particular project that you're doing, credits or materials necessary for fulfilling degree requirements for students, projects that are mostly about developing curriculum plans and teaching materials and you as a teacher rather than you uh, working on your own artistic practice. Also not eligible requests for new building construction or purchase of real estate activities for the religious socialization of the participants or audience. Uh, activities that attempt to influence any state or federal legislation. Payments of debts incurred before the grant begins. If you have another grant project with us that is still in progress, you can't apply again until you have finish the report from the first one, or um, you also can't apply if you have a past due final report still uh, hanging out there that needs to be submitted. Uh, one eligibility change that we've had this year, we now allow out-of-state travel and activities under any of these artist programs. Uh, we started out with a few that programs that we were just funding under our uh, McKnight funds, which have a little more flexibility. And then as we've added a few programs, we've grabbed some state funds to supplement that. And they had um, that travel restriction of needing to stay within the state of Minnesota. But now we've um, moved some funds around so that both of those funds are available in all of our programs. So we uh, should be able to travel outside of the state of Minnesota for your project if needed under any of those. Uh, now just looking at some deadlines throughout the year for these for our quick support grants. That is an ongoing monthly deadline. It starts August 1st through May 1st. Um, and then the earliest you could start your project would be the first day of the following month. So if you got an application in by August 1st, then by September 1st, you would know whether you received the grant or not and would be able to start your project. Um, and I will point out for all of these, uh, you'll need to submit your application by 4.30 p.m. on the deadline date. The system will not allow you to submit after that time. 
So it's actually, I think, a good idea to aim for the day before, just in case um, some issues might come up, just so you are sure to get that in. For artist growth, we have two deadlines throughout the year. Uh, the first round is coming up August 16th for projects starting October 1st or later. And then round two deadline of January 10th for projects starting March 1st or later. Then for our artist equity grant, uh, we're trying something different this year. This is still a relatively new program for, for us. I'm still kind of feeling out um, what works for deadlines this year. Um, previously had this as a monthly deadline, um, and now we're just trying this year, uh, having a, just a couple rounds just to see how that goes. Um, so the first round deadline for Artist Equity will be September 13th for projects starting November 1st or later, and round two, February 28th, projects starting April 1st or later. And then for our Advanced Artist Fellowship, we just have one round for that with a deadline of October 11th for projects starting December 1st or later. And again, with all of these, remember to submit your application by 4.30 p.m. All right, you'll need to choose a couple dates for your project. Uh, project start date. So when you're thinking about choosing that, uh, check for with each of those deadlines what that earliest allowed start date is. Um, and then think through uh, what kind of activities you might need to be doing and when those might need to start. So you can't start any activities for, toward your project before that start date. Um, so that would mean you couldn't do uh, anything like ordering supplies, having any sort of auditions if that was something involved in your project, uh, booking travel, uh, you can't spend any money before that start date. So it's really important to take a look at uh, what aligns the best with your project and it might be earlier than you're thinking. Uh, so take some time to choose that uh, start date and uh, application round carefully. Then you'll need to choose an end date for your project. And um, it's always better to give yourself more time than you think you will need um, just to complete the project and to do some kind of evaluation on how it went. And everything that will be awarded this year will need to be finished up by June 30th of 2025. So depending on when you apply, that can be up to close to two years to work on your project. And I will just stop now for a minute if there are any questions at this point. Feel free to unmute or type things in the chat. All right, not hearing anything and I haven't seen anything come through the chat. We're gonna keep moving on here. We're going to head over to our website. Uh, we have gotten a new website in the last month. Uh, so I just want to give you a little tour. We're uh, having a little different uh, nav navigation for our grants here. Hopefully this will be a little easier for people to find things. Uh, so everything you'll be looking for is under this grants tab here. Uh, one new thing is we've got the link to the grant system login right here um, in that tab. And then we have um, our grant for uh, different kinds of applicants. So we're looking at individual artists and we'll grab one of these to look at. Um, and for each, the, the page for each grant will include these same kinds of things, including the guidelines for that program. These are really important to uh, read carefully in full. I know we talked about some of the eligibility things to be aware of, but please make sure to read the actual uh, guidelines. Don't want you to miss anything there. Uh, then we've got all of our important dates for each of the rounds. Um, and then 
once we have our recording from this evening ready, we'll um, have a video available here instead of this workshop registration. So you can come back there if you want to uh, refer back to the video. Um, and then down at the bottom of here, we have some materials for you. Uh, we've got the application questions in a Word document in case uh, you'd like to work on a draft in there first um, and then paste into the system later. Uh, scoring criteria, and we will have final report questions coming soon. Uh, another thing I'd like to, to point out here is under our grants help, we have our workshops and assistance page. This covers uh, all the different ways that you can uh, get help on your application. Uh, so we have our grant support open office hours. Um, you can come to our office in Marshall on uh, the second Tuesday of the month. We're available from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, on that day. And you can um, come to get some questions answered. Um, you might want to come with all of your things and just sit there and work, and we'll be right there to answer any questions. Maybe you need some help uh, preparing some work samples. So that is available for you. Uh, we have some uh, grant Q&A sessions, some of which are in person coming up through the year. So check and see if we are going to be anywhere near you, um, along with some virtual Q&A sessions coming up. Uh, you can schedule some time on my calendar. Uh, we talk by phone or Zoom, or you can stop into our office in Marshall. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. So that'll take you to uh, my calendar where you can just grab a time on there. Um, and then we've got links to other workshops that we have. Uh, these are all upcoming ones. And then past workshops are posted here with the videos available again. So this will be another spot you could come back to find uh, today's video. Uh, finally, on the website, uh, there is this credits and resources page. Um, you've got the possible grant credit lines and logos that you might need to use uh, available for you there, a sample contract, and a couple other uh, resources that may be helpful to you. All right, so we are going to head over to our grant system. And if you are new to the system, you can create a new account here. If you have been in here before, you could go ahead and log in. If you're not sure whether you have an account or not, you can certainly contact us and then we can get that figured out for you. But I'm going to go ahead and log in here. Uh, if you have ever acted as a grant review panelist for us, make sure to change your role here to applicant so that you come to your applicant dashboard. Um, and if you are returning to the system, this is where you'll come, your applicant dashboard. Otherwise, if you're coming in for the first time, you'll go right to this apply page. And then you'll want to just scroll through and find the grant you're looking for. These are all the ones that we have open at the moment. We'll take a look at our artist growth grant. Um, if you'd like to just preview the application without actually starting anything, uh, click that preview button there. Otherwise, there's an apply button for when you are ready to get started. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and I'll point out a couple of things as we get started in our application here. Uh, if you need to work in a different language, we do have Google Translate embedded into the site, which will uh, translate translate the interface and all the application questions for you. And then you can go ahead and work in that language that works best for you. Uh, we have the Copy Previous Answers button. If you have uh, done an application in here before, you can copy from that um, and 
it'll let you choose from um, all of your previous applications and it'll copy over um, answers to any questions that are the same between those two applications. Uh, then we also have the collaborate button. Um, if you would like to invite somebody to work with you on the application, maybe you want them to uh, proof it for you. Uh, maybe somebody that you're working with has some uh, attachments that you'd like to have them just put right into your application for you, uh, things like that. So you would enter their email address here um, and then choose what level of permission you'd like to give them, send them a little message, uh, whatever it is you'd like them to do and invite them. Um, they'll receive an email and just need to follow a link um, and just need to create a password if they don't already have an account in the system. Uh, so getting started on our application, you'll need a name for your project. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something that uh, describes what it is you're going to do. You'll put in the amount that you're going to be requesting. You may want to wait to do this. Um, until you have filled out your budget form and then come back and fill this in. Um, if you'd like, we'd really appreciate if you share your pronouns so that um, as our reviewers are talking about your application, they can talk about you correctly. Um, we want you to verify your contact information. This is mostly important for uh, those who are returning in the system just to check above if things are still correct, um, or if you are, this account is also tied to an organization or school, there's an option to provide your personal contact information in case this is that organization's information. We've got some links to some of those documents here again, and then I'll point out under our tips with the character limits, have a pretty big uh, character allowance and make sure you have plenty of space, but don't feel like you need to uh, come up with a lot of extra stuff to try and fill up the text box. Uh, we just want to make sure that there's plenty of space. So your first question that you'll have to answer, describe your proposed project uh, with a couple extra questions to think about. If your project is about producing new work, what and how much do you hope to produce during this time? What is your artistic vision for that work? Uh, in other words, is there something you're trying to say? Is there a particular aesthetic that you're going for? Then if your project includes some sort of study opportunity, workshop conference, uh, describe that or if you're working with an instructor, what kind of qualifications do they have? And then finally outlining your timeline for that project. Then we've got some optional space for you here for some supplemental materials. This might be things like more information about that workshop that you're taking part in. Um, maybe you want to uh, provide a resume or some work samples of the artist mentor that you're working with. Maybe you want to give some more technical specifications about some equipment or supplies that you're requesting, um, or maybe you're working in an unusual medium or technique that people might not be familiar with and you wanna provide a little more information about. So this whole optional section um, can include any of that kind of information. Uh, and then here's where you can enter the project start and end date that you have chosen. Uh, next, you will need to put together your budget. Uh, and we do have a form here that you can use or you can create your own budget in some way, but we'll just take a look quick at that Excel budget form. So here's the form, you can enter up here uh, the name of your project or your name, and then just start listing the different kinds of costs that you have. I'll throw some numbers in here. Uh, and you'll see it is 
adding for you your total costs. Um, and then it'll help you just verify how much you can request. So it grabs your cash cost here and says your request cannot exceed for us at the moment $2,200 or the maximum request amount for this grant program, whichever is less. So we're doing artist growth, which is 4,000. So our 2,200 is less. So that's what we can request. Um, but let's say our project is a little more expensive. Um, and now our request can't exceed 5,200 or 4,000, whichever is less. So we can request our 4,000. Um, and then there's space below to say um, where this additional funding is coming from, probably your personal funds, which is enough information. Um, but that just uh, lets people know that you're aware of those extra costs and they will be covered. Um, so you would save this um, and then upload that here. Uh, you have some space budget narrative to put some more details. This is a good place to put things like if you are uh, paying yourself for your time working on this project, you could put information like, I'm estimating uh, I'll spend this many hours, I'm gonna pay myself this much per hour, things like that. Just any more details that you wanna add there. I will also point out, we have a reminder here uh, that this is, the grant funding is taxable income. So just so you are aware of that. Our next section is all about your uh, experience and your work. You can here either attach uh, your artist resume or describe your uh, training accomplishments experience here in this text box. Uh, if you are working in folk or traditional art, we ask you to talk about your connection to the cultural community that that art form comes from, um, what recognition you and your work have with that community. And then there's a spot for your artist website if you have that, and a place to put some samples of your work. These might be written materials, images, uh, links to audio or video, and we've got some suggestions here of how much you might want to submit, um, along with some links if you're doing some uh, resizing of images or um, combining images or files to attach here. So you've got a whole bunch of upload fields with a place to provide a description of each of those samples. And then you've also got um, several links to include as well with a place to describe those. And if you uh, find that you need some help with figuring out how to attach or include samples of your work, please contact us and we can give you a hand. Uh, next, we're talking about your goals. So first we're looking at uh, the impact, what kinds of artistic needs will this project meet for you based on where you are in your artistic career at the moment? How is this gonna contribute to your growth as an artist? Um, and then in thinking about that, what are some specific changes that you are hoping for? Are you looking for improvement in a particular skill? Um, are you looking for changes in your behavior as far as your artistic practice, uh, knowledge of things related to developing your career. Uh, just what are some specific things that you're hoping to see um, as part of completing this project? And then um, how will you know if those changes have taken place? Is there a way that you could measure or prove um, that those changes have happened? And um, some examples of ways to do that, maybe you're uh, asking for some feedback, 
from peers or mentors, maybe you're comparing new work to previous work, uh, journaling through your progress during the project. Now we're just collecting a little bit of data. This doesn't really have any bearing on your application, just some things that we need to collect and pass on to the state, some demographics, uh, some estimated audience numbers. Uh, you're not expected to have necessarily an audience for any of these activities. You may well be doing something that really doesn't have an audience. In that case, you would have number of adult artists, one for yourself, adult audience, one for yourself. Um, and that is plenty if that is uh, the type of project that you're doing. Um, and then we just want to gather a little bit of information about what kind of uh, what which of our opportunities for assistance you have been participating in as you're getting ready to apply for the grant. So if you would fill that out as well, that can, will be very helpful to us. Um, and then here at the end with your signatures, we're asking for your legal name. And then if there's a, an alternate name that you go by and if you'd like that used in uh, publicity about your grant. Um, and then finally, an electronic signature here. Um, so down at the bottom, you've got two buttons, save and submit. So you can come back to that submit button when you're ready. We're gonna click the save application button right now. This will be auto saving for you as you're working. Um, but if you click that save button, it'll let you know what you still have left to do. Um, so that can kind of help you track your progress. Um, and then you would just click continue to keep working. But we're gonna head back to our dashboard. And now here is that uh, application that we just started. And if you wanna go back and keep working on it, there's this edit application link. And then this will be the same place you can come back to later if you're awarded a grant to be able to find your contract and your final report. All right, I'm gonna jump back over to our slides again for a second and pause again if there are questions. Feel free to unmute or type something in the chat. Have a question in the chat here. If we do a presentation, we need to mention SMOC. Um, yeah, if there is some sort of uh, public facing uh, aspect to your project, there will be um, a, a credit line or logo poster that you'll need to include. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. All right, I think we will continue on here. Uh, just some tips as you're working on your application. Uh, we talked about this a little bit already, but think ahead to make sure you choose the best round for your project. Again, just to make sure that all of those activities are going to be eligible that fit in time-wise. Uh, read the guidelines and criteria carefully. We'll take a look at some of the criteria here in a minute. Um, but just to help you have a, a good application. Good to know all of that. Also start working on your application early. Uh, one, so you have plenty of time to get uh, help if you need it. And again, so you make sure you get that submitted for sure by the deadline. Um, then you'll also, you saw in the application that a lot of the Questions had multiple sub questions to them. So make sure you're getting all of those um, and answering that all fully. And no need to feel like you need to use any sort of fancy grant language. Just keep your answers real clear and concise using everyday language. Uh, that is the most helpful for our reviewers to read as well as easier for you. Um, it's also good to assume that the grant reviewers don't know anything about you or your project. It sometimes helps to have somebody else take a read through of your application who really doesn't know anything about what it is you're doing. 
um, that can really help find some things that might be missing or unclear. And finally, don't hesitate to contact us. We are here to help you. Uh, and I see another question here. If we submit our application and then need to add something, can we do that? Um, if you're still maybe a couple days before the deadline, I can sure send it back to draft for you if you need to fix something. So some other ways to get some help. Uh, we can talk through your project with you before you get started. Make sure you are applying under the program that fits the best for what you're doing. Um, make sure everything's eligible. You can contact us anytime as you're working on your application, get some questions answered. Um, the other thing we can do is if you let us know about two weeks before the deadline, if you have a draft ready, we can take a look at that for you um, ahead of time and let you know if you're missing anything, if something sounds confusing, uh, just to give you uh, a little feedback there that can be really helpful. So please take advantage of that if you can, we're happy to do that. So what happens after you submit your application? Um, the first thing is that SMAC staff will review that for eligibility and completeness. And if at that stage we find that there's something missing or some question of eligibility, we will contact you and you'll have 48 hours to fix whatever that is. And then at that point, that is SMAC staff's kind of last contact with your application. We don't have any say over uh, what gets funded or not. We're just here kind of as your advocate. So then at that point, uh, the round of applications will get passed on to a panel of individuals from around our region, and they will read the applications, um, discuss them, and score them based on the criteria for that program, which we'll look at in a second. Um, and then their scores will go to our board of directors who make the final funding decisions, um, which is usually just taking uh, the ranked list of scores and taking the money as far down the list as it goes. So as far as criteria for the quick support program, we, they are looking at the impact of the project that is worth 62% of your score and then your ability to accomplish the project with 38%. And that both looks at, uh, is your level of, of experience appropriate to the project that you're trying to do? And also, um, does your planning make sense? Have you allowed yourself enough time, enough budget? Are the materials really what you need? Um, things like that. Then for artist growth and artist equity, 45% uh, of your score will be based on the excellence of your work. So those work samples are very important. Um, another 45%, the project's contribution to your growth as an artist, and then 10% on the feasibility of the project. And then for the advanced artist scoring criteria is um, even more emphasis on that excellence of work, 58%, 32% for the contribution to the artist growth, and again, 10% for the feasibility of the project. Um, and if you look at uh, where we were on the website, where those materials are listed, uh, and there were criteria sheets there, those all go into um, a lot more detail of each of these uh, criteria areas. So those are really helpful to take a look at. Um, you do have the option of uh, being able to get a few more points added to your score. We have some priorities that we're looking for. So if you are a first time applicant to us, if you are from a BIPOC or LGBTQ community or a person with disabilities, or if you are from a county that hasn't received as much funding from us recently, um, so you could earn up to uh, three additional percentage points on top of your score if you meet any of those criteria. So those are added um, in between the panel's final score 
um, before it vendors to the, the board for that final funding decision. So if you are awarded a grant, you'll need to uh, sign a contract with us that is available online. We looked at where you could find that. Um, and then your grant award amount will be issued out to you after that contract is received. Um, you'll need to acknowledge the grant on um, any sort of publicity or marketing promotion that you do. There'll be a credit line in your grant contract that's tied to the, the funding, particular funding source that we um, were able to fund you from. Uh, and then you may also need to use this Minnesota Legacy logo, again, depending on the funds that we are using for your grant. Um, so that information will all be sent to you. You won't have to guess uh, at what you need to do. And we also looked at on the website where you can find some of that information as well. But again, that would be on any sort of public facing um, information having to do with your project. So as you're working on your project, we know that things do not always go as planned. So um, if things start heading a different way, uh, contact us if you need to make some changes. Um, there are some things we may be able to help you with. We may be able to extend your project end date to give you a little more time. We may be able to approve some changes to your budget if some piece of equipment that you were gonna get is no longer available, um, help you come up with something else you could um, spend that money on that's in the same spirit of the project. Um, so please, if things are starting to not go right, talk to us and we are happy to help you uh, figure something out to make that work. Um, you'll also need to do a final report. You'll have 60 days after your project end date to get that in. Um, and when you're getting started on your project, it's really good to check what kind of information you'll need to be gathering. So be sure to take a look at that as you are getting started. And that is all of the information I was wanting to get through this evening. Um, so I uh, will just open things up if there are specific projects you have in mind that you'd like to talk about or any other questions that you have. Hi, Carolyn. This is Jeremy Radke. Hey. Um, I am. Can I just explain my, my project to you briefly sure. and, and see if it's something that would work, I think. Yeah. Um, so I I have displayed a, a small amount of my work. Um, I I actually I found pictures that my grandpa took when he was in the service in South Korea, mm -hmm. and they were all in black and white. And I I'm a graphic designer myself, so I colorized all the pictures and then had them printed and displayed so that I could see what he saw uh -huh. when he was taking the picture. Uh -huh. And I ended up uncovering the fact that we have all kinds of memorabilia of his. And I would like to, I would like to somehow turn this display. And I, cause I have up to probably about 60 or 70 pictures okay. to recolor and to have printed. And then, I would like to be able to have the room full of pictures that are black and white. And then as people go by, they can switch them over to the colored version mm -hmm. and then experience what the room would have been like had you been there. So one in black and white, one in color, and then kind of give people the feeling when they're in a gallery of maybe what it would have been like on the actual um, army base that he was on and mm -hmm. things like that. So that's that's kind of the idea. Is this it, it does you know which one I would fit into? Am I more of a starting out? I mean, I've displayed before. Do you, but do you know what kind of costs you're looking at? I do. Yeah. I mean, for I know a, a ballpark. You know, just based on the smaller sizes that I've printed mm -hmm. already. So. I mean, that could get me 
that could get me so far material wise, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So should I just base um, it on the that I need? Probably. There are, um, I think a lot of people just kind of starting out feel a little more comfortable if their expenses fit within that, starting with the quick support, which is a thousand dollars. Again, I don't, I don't know if that covers your cost, um, but there's no reason uh, why you couldn't um, do the artist growth instead. Sure. The, I mean, the quick support gives you a little more opportunity for maybe if you didn't get it the first time, applying again the next time. Um, so, so that is definitely something that we encourage if uh, people don't get a grant the first time, definitely apply again. Um, sure. The one thing I would I would have you think about is being able to talk about what kinds of artistic choices you're making in doing this project and how this is going to affect you as an artist. Um, Cause I, I, that seems a little, uh, a little weak to me, at least in just what you were talking about. Sure. So that, so that would be uh, something to, to think about. Okay. Yeah. So, so the kinds of expenses are definitely eligible. It just is kind of the, the angle that you're going about this from. Sure. Yeah. So, so it might be helpful to um, sort of walk through the, the application yourself and see how you might answer some of those questions that are more about your artistic growth. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you. Yeah, definitely. If you have things a little more fleshed out, we can sure talk again if you want, if that's helpful. Sure. Yeah, I think it will be. Yeah, because I kind of have a bit of a narrative in my head how it how it fits better, you know, in with building a little bit of a story about it yeah. and yeah. how it's impacted. It's it's taught me something in the short time that I've been doing this, and yeah, and I've only done seven of the pictures. You know, I got a lot more to do and a lot more to to go through as I do them. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I've got a question in the chat. Um, for this being taxable income, do we have to set aside that amount within the proposed budget? Um, there's nothing that you need to, to do for your budget. It's just so that you're aware that this grant amount that you're receiving will be um, when you do your taxes at the end of the year, that'll be uh, added to your income. So nothing you have to do with the grant. Sometimes we've just had people be surprised at the end of the year when they get their 1099 saying this was taxable income. So we just want people to, to be aware of that fact. Uh, does, does that answer your question, Ruth? Great. She says, yes, thank you. All right. Any other questions or uh, projects, uh, project ideas you'd like to talk through? Sheila, I have a question for you. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Um, so the project that I'm doing um, is uh, not in the U.S. So um, do I need to put a con um, monetary conversion in the grant? Um, I think it... If you put equivalent amounts, I think that'd be helpful just so people know. Okay. What? Um, so if you do are able to do everything in dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Anything else anyone would like to talk about this evening? All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. And feel free to contact me if you have more questions. Everybody have a good evening.